Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, today's uh, subject will be Shadows of the Spirit of the Winds of War. And it's the part of the introduction of this anthology. And with me is my very good friend, Eve Lorgan. And uh, for those who do not know who Eve Lorgan is, um, she's a well-known researcher and author on several books, such as The Dark Side of Cupid and Love Affairs and The Supernatural and Energy Vampirism. Eve Lorgan is also a consultant in anomalous trauma, offering hypnotherapy, coaching, telephonic consultations, and services. And the link will be in the description. And uh, all of that mouthful. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, Eve. Thank you for joining. Hello. It's so good to, to reconnect and to talk about freely whatever we really want to talk about. And actually to make connections between things that maybe many people don't consider. So it might be kind of a complex discussion, yes. but um, we'll do what we can to bring light to subjects that may have not been thought about before. Absolutely. And yeah. um, we're going to be digging into the shadows a little bit. And with regards to all of that information, we've got quite a lot of, a lot of subjects that we're going to be covering for everyone. So um, I, I do feel that uh, while we're, I'll just give a little hint on the subjects that we're going to be covering is um, the Nazi parallel world, the infiltration of the super soldier or the, and the SSP, the uh, secret space program, dark fleet, Nazi presence in my lab, abduction, psychological science, etc. a whole list. And then narcissists and how do we explore as well as the archetypes, which we will be discussing. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, a very complex um uh, yeah. video for us. Yeah. So, uh, Eve, um, the shadows, I'd like to start off with that and just um, bring it in. While the system is going, obviously, through a passage from one reality to another, every time, whenever that happens, we're, um, we can actually feel that we're going through a timeline as such. We're always having to deal with these the shadows that are always attached to the last, to the previous time timeline yeah. that we're, yeah. So if we're going into a new one, there will always be shadows in the previous timeline that we have to clear within ourselves. And with regards to that, which is, I think we're going to be kicking off with is um, the material on the UFO subject as such. And I think we're going to, be able to explain to people um, what is disclosure and what is PSYOP and all of the yeah. other elements that are related to that. I think that's very important. We have not um, discussed this before. No, and, and so, right. that's like big, the big trending, so to speak, is yeah. well, they've, of course I've been expecting and wanting disclosure more about the UFO related subject for many years, like maybe yeah. from a more official perspective, but yeah. I believe that, you know, there's, there's a slow disclosure that's probably going to be happening in stages. And some people may be able to define this more clearly with respect to the craft or the UFO scene on the more technical engineering kind of more physical level, which really I don't really work with that, to be honest. I work more with people who've had a direct experiences with what they believe to be ETs, aliens, mm -hmm. interdimensional beings, <laughs> or the MyLab, mm -hmm. uh, military intelligence, spooky Nazis, secret soldier, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that even recently, I mean, I could just bring this up now because of the disclosure that there may be agendas that are run by people, let's say at the top of these intelligence and security related agencies and governments who may have information and knowledge, but they want to present it or only aspects of it in such a way that they don't basically, <laughs> I don't know how you say it, put their foot in their mouth um, right. because it, a lot of them just made a Faustian bargain. Let's just face it. Yeah. Like there's, there's yeah. definitely some darker elements, you know, you can call it the Nazis, um, the cabal, mm. the Illuminati, you know, many of them are associated with some of the darker malevolent 
interdimensional beings, fallen angels, demons, and ETs, aliens. There's a whole di- bunch of different ones that are described. So, and then, then technologies associated with that. Mm. So I think that they're going to want to only show a certain thing that shows, oh yeah, these craft are real, but uh, mm. Long story short, I don't think that they were going to admit to, let's say, a Faustian bargain where like we're in a heap of trouble now because they opened the doorway to some like dark things that Mm -hmm. we can't always control. And at the same time, there's this other story going on, especially like with the dark journalist did a whole show on this about the UFO disclosure. What's going to happen? How are they going to try to spin it towards this? Uh, evil alien invasion kind of scenario and then it's all fake basically Mm. so i would um actually disagree with that black and white kind of way of doing it because from my perspective as a therapist and a researcher who's worked directly with people who've had firsthand abductions you know encounters multiple abductions multiple things the whole nine yards many of them have been in contact with the ones that I believe are more, let's say less benevolent and more manipulative for their own agendas. And yeah. pretty much in my book, I go into that with respect to just like relationship manipulation. Mm. But then there's others who may have contact with benevolent ones. But they tend to happen on a more of a interdimensional um, in, entering in your dreams, um, having positive inspirational influence in your life that has a different signature. Mm. So the, if there are the good ones, they, they probably won't interact in the same ways that we may expect with like huge craft or how they're going to try to present it in disclosure. Um, yeah. So recently there's been a death. I just found out last week, um, two um, UFO researchers, one who is a engineer researcher more scientific named mark mccandlish Mm. who you know was more of an engineer and did a lot of um technical you know drawings and reverse engineering of craft and things so he lived in california so apparently it was a alleged suicide in april but there's many discussions that are saying that the 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 signature of way how this appeared based on what he was going to present at a senate for ufo disclosure Mm that basically what he knew and what he was presenting was not within the agenda. And they offed him basically. Mm-hmm. So I, I actually knew of him through a, a personal friend that I lived in the same neighborhood in California mm-hmm. and it was her ex-husband. So I found out about Mark years ago and then he became a whistleblower years later about all the things that he discovered. So he, he knew a lot and what surprised me is, I guess, in, in some of the email threads that I was shown through another colleague who interviewed him, <clears throat> he did make mention of how supposedly there was a technology or information. I don't know if it's through looking glass or something associated with time travel, where people in some of these secret agencies were able to go into the future and find out like and millions of years ahead, Earth was destroyed through <clears throat> some malevolent alien invasion scenario or whatever. And so they wanted to <clears throat> find out and go back through time what happened and then go back, back in time to genetically, <clears throat> well, watch Alter and follow the generations yeah. who had abilities which could defend against this potential timeline and then created Project Pegasus as part of that. And so mm-hmm. Andrew Basaggio was like the big expose for Project Pegasus in the 70s. Yeah. And it's a darker program for time travel and teleportation. But Mark went into some discussion about some of the people in these projects and their kids. Right. So they're yeah. like adults who are having kids now and how, you know, the kids are showing basically abilities and, you know, telepathic abilities, their ability to you know remote view the future. They're getting dreams. And so he went on to describe People like a woman that he knew years ago who, you know, psychically picked up the 911, you know, the Fukushima, Mm. all these things that happened exactly as she saw it, including something that happened yet, like an earthquake in California, Mm. and then a a type of UFO alien, um, I don't want to call it invasion, but a large scale contact following that San Andreas Fault large earthquake, which has yet to occur. Right. So. He, he mentioned a lot of these things that, you know, I have heard over the years about, you know, many of these people in the projects, <clears throat> sometimes they're being sent as operatives to do things that they really 
don't necessarily want to do. There's somebody else handling them and controlling them that are heads of these my lab operations, secret right. space program, where they utilize them for their abilities. <clears throat> and then some of them seem to have contact with some benevolent beings who you know, might maybe guiding all along in yeah. such a way that who knows how this will turn out. Cause I don't want to make it a black and white situation. No, it's different. just to say that there's much more than just the craft, you know, flying in the sky. And <clears throat> so a lot of, I guess what Mark had disclosed <clears throat> was also the fact that, you know, a lot of these craft are coming in and out of portals. They're not just sipping around the sky from some planet far away or whatever. I mean, they come through interdimensional portals and they're interdimensional. And that's been yeah. going on for, for years and beings do that as well. Yeah. And sometimes there are some that are natural, natural yeah. portals. So this yeah. kind of ties back to what you had discussed about well, what are these parallel worlds and these Nazi technologies of, you, you right. call it operating high jump, yes. where I don't know if they wanted to find out more about the technology that can access portals to, let's say, parallel dimensions, parallel worlds, parallel timelines, because I think that's already happening and has, you know, yeah. already it's, happened. It happened, obviously, for the reason that they wanted to discover the actual technology itself, because from what I have um, learned, um, <laughs> apparently, the uh, Nazis had created a particular uh, society called the Anerbe, which is German for occult technology. And so in that way, they essentially were very interested in trying to create, uh, they were trying to go forward in time and then they went backwards in time because obviously you can't really go too far forward without losing the details of what happened in the past. And it's mostly... Um, important for them to control the past as such easier um, uh, very interesting information on on what you've brought up with regards to uh, going back to Andrew Basiago from the Pegasus yeah. thing um, and I think was there not a discussion about um, how they were utilizing the time jumping, time chair, time jump chair at some point. There was something like that mentioned at some point. And I can't remember who said that. Um, uh, could have been in what, in one of his interviews or something. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, one of Andrews? Well, because yes, there were yes. several actual forms of time travel. There was the chronovisor, which was more of something that you could observe in a 3D holographic form. And then there was the, the jump gate portal technology where you literally can jump from one physical location to another in a teleportation mm. in real time, maybe as well as other times. So he even described how he went back to see like Abraham Lincoln do a speech way That's back right. in the colonial days. And then there was a photograph taken. And in that one, he actually did go back as if he was physical, but I don't know if his body was physical, but I think it was because he had to get a pair of shoes like yeah. he was barefoot or something. Sure. So there's things where you can like go in and holographically, it's like you're interacting, but you're not really physically there. And then there's one where you just kind of watch it. And the one where you apparently teleport in physically. And then that's why they had to use children because children seem to be better yeah. able to do things. You yeah, are able to, to manage everything. This is where I think, Obviously, we have what they, what I'm speculating that they have had sections in where they would have children operate, do the, become the operators. And then um, you would have another section that would work on keeping, on actually working on the occult side to that technology. That's what I've been working on with, uh, well, investigating very strongly. And um, it explains what you've been picking up as well over the last few weeks as well um, in terms of what's really the, the nitty gritty in terms of the UFO, ufology and the study of the sites and the study of actual extraterrestrial presence and so on. Sort of like what's been going on right now in the world where, if they, where there's a lot of discovery being made about um, the, the actual uh, chemical that we're all in, that, that, that they want everyone to inject in them 
with regards to yes. the in, the manipulation of the DNA. I had once actually thought to myself, what if that has something to do with what they did with um, um, people who are very uh, gifted at, as such? Uh, would they then try and use that same particular pattern of, of technology <clears throat> to then create something else? Uh, that's yeah. just speculation on my part. But, uh, yeah, like the whole that goo um, right. augmentation that You're many right. of the SP people talk about. Mm. Although, um, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, you know, there's nanotech self-assembling, and then right. um, like even years ago, I was involved with you know um, accompanying Dr. Lear and, and Daryl Sims on some of the earliest alien implant removals, where they filmed it, mm. and they, I interviewed the people. And that was, um, there was different types of implants that were obviously observable through x-rays, all the ways they wouldn't have been able to find them. And then there were some that were, you know, more biological connected to the nervous system that had certain tissues and, you know, qualities, some that were metallic or meteoric in origin, according to the analysis. But I don't think at that time they, they knew about the, um, the carbon nanotubule types of implants that were later being talked about by another researcher. And the only reason I bring that up is because the carbon nanotubule is like the graphite type of material that can self assemble and have the sending and receiving capabilities to build networks within the body and maybe even its own nervous system, which right. is interactive with frequency modulation, right. you know, either Wi Fi or other kinds of frequencies. So that I believe is, is responsible. I mean, I'm just running off the top of my head here, but I believe that because of some of the types of uh, telepathic technologies mm. where they will want to enhance a type of telepathic communication. And, and there was a MyLab, we talked about this on our last show. It was some man who was a MyLab talked about it in an early 2015 interview mm. where he was used to, to, be experimented on and augmented mm. with this. Uh, it's kind of like a reverse telepathy connection that takes right. place that just like link you up with this AI thing. That's like really, it's like a bug. It's like a bug. You can't get out of your head basically. Right. And right. I think it's not the same as the voice to skull technology. It might be an adaptation or a right. more refined version of that. What I think too. So what I'm thinking is that a lot of the telepathy might be augmented and overridden by our natural thought processes mm -hmm. or magnify it that can be influenced in a way that I don't think is good. Like for mm -hmm. example, with um, the ads that come up on your uh, computer and yeah. you know, all that stuff it, in your cell phone. So I think that's already happening, but that if someone has, let's say a larger amount of this kind of implant technology in their body set up as a network, then it can override their thought processes and their ideas yeah. and depending on how connected they are to what I call the original awareness of our eternal spirit, exactly. which that is the whole other conversation that yeah, kind that of relates to something, one. something yeah. else that has to do with ancient, ancient, original, organic. I know original. this is, yeah. yeah, because it goes back to um, some of the Gnostic findings of what they discovered as a type of demi-urge and the archons and rulers of this kind of lower system reality, including right. earth, that would like, all right, we have bodies, we have soul, we have spirit, but that mm. we are like a hybrid creation of the lower world archontic aspect and the higher heavenly eternal spirit aspect. Exactly. Yeah. But that, we are largely influenced not only by the body passions, which are actually unnatural to our true nature in terms of mm -hmm. eternal being, which yeah. I'm restudying the Nag Hammadi for the umpteenth time, you know, by the way, but it kind of goes into how I can recognize the ramping up of mm -hmm. a type of control that is our contact that is using technology to hijack our thoughts and our natural awareness so that we can be controlled, endlessly recycled and uploaded into other realities, other worlds or whatever, in a way that truly imprisons us. And this is part yeah. of the war, yeah, you know? That's exactly it. The, yeah. This particular war, it, warfare, I, I know 
was written about, I, I'm calling it warfare or propaganda, that's my opinion, but it was written very strongly, well, it was very strongly motivated by a French physician, um, <clears throat> and I've put his information, physician and philosopher Julien Offre de la Métri. Interesting that his surname is de la Métri, because it sounds like material. Um, really? And he published an, a book, or sorry, an article in 1747, where he spoke about man as a machine that day, oh. that time. He seemed, oh. he argued very strongly that um, man as a machine or man must be seen as a machine um, because of the materialistic philosophy that they were very strongly believing in back in the day. And I think they've never stopped which is why things are the way they are um, with mm -hmm. this materialism worship or religion is what I call that. And um, there was also, he also used, uh, um, I'm just uh, throwing this in here. There, he also used or extended on the work of Descartes who mm -hmm. um, said that the argue, or arguments that animals are mere automatons or machines. Mm -hmm. Humans are uh -huh. the, the animal as such. So that was what they were talking about back then. And so that explains why there is such a strong materialistic baseline that's been, that was created into the system so that there would be everything else to believe in, in that particular structure so mm -hmm. that we become then, we forget who we are completely. Um, which I think adds to what you were saying with regards to the uh, what we're supposed yeah. to remember who we are um, yeah. in the Nagamadi, uh, yeah. the the mirror image of of ourselves. I suppose it's based on duality, but I think we could also just also learn to become balanced in that. Yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. just my thoughts on that. Um, it's very interesting I mean, that you bring that up. It's interesting too i mean even when one realizes some of the let's say the mk ultra mind control programming which is well known through let's say the project paperclip uh right. history but that the mind control fracturing and structuring a lot of it was based on trying to understand the human mind as a computer and as you know parts that could be seen like a machine especially in mm -hmm. some of the more programming but mm -hmm. in fact there really is a spiritual science behind it that exactly. the, you know, the deep black occultists knew to try to basically <clears throat> take away our spiritual power to guide ourselves and instead be used as puppets for their their agenda so really it's our um, learning how to reconnect to our spiritual power and awareness so that we can um, notice when these things are happening to, to make the right choices and decisions mm. and to be able to um, see through the veil of programming and through the veil of agendas and, the, and, and I hate to say it, but observe <clears throat> how, when this takes place, when the shadow comes in and overrides consciousness through telepathy or whatever, and you think right. it's you, but it's not. And yeah. this goes into some of the difficult navigation of when we talk about shadow work mm. in therapy and and a lot of it it goes back to Jung right mm -hmm. Carl Jung and and it was very valuable and insightful his theories which he broke away from Sigmund Freud you know years ago yeah. but there's something about shadow and archetypes which kind of goes back to some of the archontic infection like mm -hmm. a viral infection Infection right. that is actually reifying a type right of arc programming to keep us away from the expansive original eternal awareness of being, which will actually free us from that entrapment recycling business exactly. that this contact thing is doing. Right. So this kind of goes back to, I know we're kind of running into it quickly, but it's something that was explored and discovered primarily through one of my long-term interviewees and clients and colleagues, who's also a researcher who is just mm -hmm. phenomenally aware, um, had been involved with my labs and abductions and psychic stuff and like super psychic. She's like one of these, 
we we kind of had a term like the original goddess awareness i mean mm. kind of thing and, and because she's female but it's not necessarily just because it's female it's just something we came up with because we there was is there seemed to be an original history mm. behind it that had to do with how let's say we had an original form and awareness that was maybe androgynous or dominated through a type of a type of goddess thing but it was a very aware androgynous goddess kind of awareness that then mm. was evaded by i mean this is her story but it, i think there's something to this and maybe it goes back to the whole lyra thing it's or what happened on the original eden but <clears throat> what she remembered through observing archetypes in her dreams that she knew from Jungian analysis, as well as her own recognition mm. of how these archetypes were playing in her dreamscape and how they actually were um, reifying a type of programming, uh -huh. which goes back to um, she was able to just keep working with her original awareness that kept showing her things that were sometimes contradicting with what history tells us about certain mm. constellations, for example, or certain narratives and themes that were taught. So we know our reality has been kind of hijacked, co-opted, inverted, so that we are very confused about our original memory. Right. So and that might be deliberate. So actually, she, she discovered through her dreams that there were, it's as if there was a type of, let's say, invasion by an archetypal dark male figure that came from the Boots, Boots constellation. Okay. And um, in, in our other history of constellations, and I'm not an astrological, I don't mm. know that stuff, but it's actually opposite that what she discovered, that these mm. you know, dark men who came and invaded these goddess original awareness beings, mm. um, they hijacked through war and through you know, subjugation, yeah. the original awareness and the goddesses. So she was perceiving this in an archetypal way in her dreams that made her <clears throat> actually question some of what Jung um, basically made very famous in his, you know, archetypal images and shadow yeah. work. But also um, she believes that Jung had come across the Abraxas figure, which is a famous archetypal being known in Gnostic uh, findings and tractates, which actually carries some people think is good but i think it carries the the entrapper demi urge one of yeah, the symbolic uh, images yeah yeah and i believe that the abraxas figure was the one with the lion face and the serpent body i've got a and picture it, of it, it yeah right i'll i'll, I'll share it with you <clears throat> yeah i don't have that one in my uh, I've got that one for you there it is this is the part of that. Oh, That's the yes. original yeah, one. But the, 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 the lion yeah. head. How it splits as well. It splits it into two snakes on that one. Some of them yeah. are like one snake on the bottom and then a lion head on top. Yes. Yeah, like there's very ancient ones here. But the Abraxas is the one that I think that uh, she actually just sent me an email to try to further define yeah. Maybe that Jung, like let's say he found out about Abraxas as this deep archetypal thing that would pop up, but that the Abraxas might have been associated with what she saw as, let's say, the false father figure God, the one that That's was right. Brahmanic and father, but that like the controlling manipulator, like the Demiurge one, mm -hmm. not the, I don't think it's the one that Jesus Christ um made an example of through his life of love and forgiveness that was probably hijacked, you know, a long time mm. ago. Right. So I don't think it's that God, but it's also something that I recognized in the work of Dr. Corrado Malanga mm -hmm. of Italy, who worked a lot with, you know, investigating the alien abduction phenomena and what he called, he called it more alien interference and how he discovered through many of the hypnotic type of regressions and sessions that he did where he was able to basically communicate with the, that we understand we're a triad of consciousness within a physical body, Correct. the mind, uh, the spirit and the soul, how he yes. understood it. And basically uh, he understood that, you know, there was a lack of connection between the mind, spirit and soul, and that the alien would insert itself in between or within 
usually the mind or what he called the spirit component within the body or in the brain mm. that would basically insert the alien consciousness, the alien program, the alien memories so that we lost our direct connect with our eternal original awareness. Right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the primary beings that was like kind of ahead of one of the higher ups of this hierarchy of alien beings was the being that he called the primordial man, That's right. the primordial man within his description of what was basically found out in these alien abduction things where they're trying to become free of the alien implants and the alien memories mm -hmm. um, to become free of the primordial man. And he would show up often as um, not only just like a, a father figure, but almost like a grandfather who was like really tall and wore a robe and had this like light coming out and really, you know, piercing eyes. Mm -hmm. And that one of the things that he found through the further you know, regressive hypnosis and discovering, well, what is this uh, primordial man relationship to you? Mm -hmm. um, and that these people, they would, they would have a connection in their soul to have like, like this cord was connected to them and this primordial man. And then what would happen is they would be programmed to like, go back to this father figure that they loved and then keep getting recycled back. Yeah. But it was almost like a fake God, basically a fake mm -hmm. father God that kept him entrapped and being recycled over and over and over again. So some of Malanga's work was to discover that and to cut that cord from the mm -hmm. primordial man being the fake father God, which I think goes back to this Abraxas figure. I think actually. you're right. I think you're right. And it really strongly presents itself even now, given that the, what we've been researching, I'm sure you've discovered from when you used to work with certain people, certain uh, clients, um, the information that they would present would be so much more different than what is presented now. You can probably recognize uh, mm. there's newer um, intel, so to speak. From what well, I'm say. like, I don't know, like the newer, I mean, I've seen this since my first introduction to quote, a super soldier, and we didn't even call it that then, mm. was a man who was actually in a MK Ultra project that he called himself a Montauk boy. And this was the oh, Andy wow. Perro story from like 1998, 1999. It was Preston mm -hmm. Nichols who brought him yes. to Philadelphia. And then I met him at a conference and we talked for hours. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I had heard of SRA and MK Ultra, like the Monarch thing before. Mm -hmm. But what Andy was involved in was, um, you know, this Nazi based stuff to create like a super soldier with abilities and time mm -hmm. travel and all this other stuff that was basically a secret space program, but it was definitely Nazi run and definitely from right. malevolent handlers. And I remember him calling him like my Nazi handlers. And he would like joke and call this one Adolf. And he said he was like a total dork and he didn't know how to dress. And they were like always torturing him and doing stuff. So this was years ago before mm. any of these people started coming out talking about mm. you know, the secret space program and the dark fleet. And so we're, we're actually discovering more and more as people, like the younger, maybe the younger generation who are now and mm. maybe in thirties, forties, you know, are remembering things much more than mm. some of the earlier ones or the earlier ones just couldn't come out because they just got targeted so bad. Mm. But so their stories are really kind of taking center stage that have a lot to do with the technology of like the med beds or the regen tanks or the, mm. the chimeras and the hybrids and the tanks stored in these like, off-world places or yeah. Antarctica and yeah so but in in my early work it was just you know simple alien abduction and maybe what they remembered in their experiences and then the my lab involvement and then you know the shadow what do you call it uh, shadow mirrors cloak and dagger kinds of things that would happen you know when people would try to find out about their experiences they would have an interference they would have like suddenly you know their spouse got in an argument with them and they couldn't come to the support group meeting or they'd have like one of these abduction dreams you know before they'd go see a hypnotherapist where they'd be threatened and made sick so they couldn't travel so there was always some interfering aspect that would come in to try to prevent them from remembering deep deep down what really happened and what I believe um, that Barbara Barthrick later discovered, at least in some of her cases, which are really, you know, she she got a lot of the pretty scary ones, yeah. you know, where, you know, under under the first memory of, of something, you know, if you went deeper, you found out, you know, a darker kind of 
situation. So people were given either screen memories or they were prevented on many interference level from going deeper, deeper, deeper to get to the root of you know, what are these beings really doing and what do they want? Were they trying to make us believe about our future, about our mission with them, with these space mm -hmm. brothers? So there's a lot of shady areas here. Would you, which, would you say, sorry, um, would you say, yeah. would you say that there's that technology is now being used now more overtly? Would you, what's absolutely. your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can see this. I mean, we just had a discussion, <laughs> me and a, a longtime researcher who, um, <clears throat> one of the things that I just kind of joked about is like something that my colleague, I won't mention his name because I don't want to give permission to, but we had yeah. discovered, like, let's say in our support group meetings and we go to UFO conferences and, um, you know, we would talk to people who claim to have multiple alien encounters. Sometimes they would be grays. Sometimes they would be a different kind of being. They may have a certain belief system towards them. Maybe they were, they didn't know, or they were traumatized by it. Right. So that, you know, one day, let's say when you meet them at the support group and you have several meetings with them or at a conference, you know, they're like your friends, right? Like mm -hmm. you're in agreement. And then mm -hmm. like suddenly they do a, a 180 on you. Like all of a sudden they're like turned against you. They won't talk to you. They got triggered. They got abducted. They got reprogrammed or, mm -hmm. or they suddenly got triggered to be your enemy or, or the smear campaign against you or like suddenly they just did the 180, right? Mm -hmm. So this kind of sudden change of heart, change of character that seemed to deter away from finding out deeper truths about what's really going on tended to happen. And then sometimes these things, I mean, I wrote them in my book to try mm. to make simple examples where like, okay, before, mm. let's say I love why it's set up where someone is attracted to someone, they seem to be set up and they're having these paranormal supernatural synchronicities. They feel like they met their soulmate or whatever. But then let's say one of them got abducted at a camping trip. And then following that abduction, maybe they may not really remember everything that happened, right? It was maybe missing mm. time, thought it was a dream. They just kind of don't know, but they just know that there was like an abduction because they know the signs of an abduction. Yeah. But then after that, they're switched off to that partner. Like, they just right. have no longer any feelings for them. They're switched off. Like, whoops, the change the program. Like now they don't like you anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it really, I think it should encourage us to go deeper into the exploration of when these things happen. Um, let's find out maybe more deeply than maybe a surface level memory or even a triggered feeling that's compelling us to adopt a certain narrative or to to make us adopt an air that suddenly like, let's say people who were formerly friends or associates. And I've seen this happen locally mm -hmm. with respect to let's call the recent issue yeah. um, where, you know, they were friends and everything's cool. Mm -hmm. They're open-minded people. They have a chat, you know, they meet at the friggin' restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the year later, after they've changed, all of a sudden the top of conversation is one specific thing. And how mm -hmm. they believe about that thing and how if you don't do that thing, you're the enemy. And they're like, yeah. you're either black or white. And like, now you're an enemy. Like, why? Why are they suddenly yeah. just bring up this topic? like it's a programmed thing? Yeah. Right. Just like something up in conversation. Like, why are you talking about that? Why do you even need to talk about that? Like, mm -hmm. what's going on? Like, why do they have to make you an enemy and have to talk about that? Like, mm -hmm. we were friends before. Like, hey, hey, dude, like, there's a sudden shift. We call this the 180. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So what we used to call in the old alien abduction days where, you know, somebody was MK, somebody was abducted, yeah. something happened, they got triggered, they did the 180. And so that we couldn't go deeper into finding out what really there. happened. Yeah. You know, what's really going on. And then, you know, of course, there's personality conflicts happen normally yeah. in in you know society, but in general, we notice this more often than not. And we used to call it the manipulated Muppet, right? Yeah. We used to say, you know, a lot of times, like, whenever you're in the, <laughs> this was a, <laughs> it's a quote, I don't know if it was James Bartley. It's funny because he studied military history. So he knew how mm -hmm. to, like, that's a military counterintelligence op, and this is a this, and this is a that, and that's a parallel <laughs> that happened in World War II. And, like, he just picked this shit out, like, really well. Mm -hmm. And he would say that, you know, be careful of who you're with in your foxhole when the shit hits the fan 
make sure it's not a manipulated Muppet, <laughs> right? So it's like when the shit hits the fan, make sure you don't have a manipulated Muppet with you in the foxhole or the right. trench, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of had funny terms for things, but this, the same kind of thing is, I think is happening through a, a streamlined technology that exactly. may have been experimented on with, you know, some of the early abductees, MK ultra, some of these people in these projects who probably knew global. about this. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. global MK ultra in action to put it like that. But um, yeah, I call them, I, I, I think I made a, yeah. I call them the familiars, you know, witches used to have these cats or oh, dogs or little, um, yeah. little bugs or something with them. The thing yes. is about a familiar, a familiar is, has a job. It is to be assigned while the witch is creating its um, magic spell that it uses the familiar to ascertain the, the, the demon that, that is called up for that particular spell. So, Familiars have their purpose. That is another thing that's quite something that I've discovered. Um, I, I, you could just call them Muppets, the same thing, um, except that they're much more overtly letting you know that you should go and get yourself, you know, done. Yes. Um, yes. Because if you don't, you know, you're against right. us type of thing. Yeah, and is, it's kind of like a cult. Um, you can see it like a cult abuse mind control right. operation. Yes. Now, anybody who studied cult abuse can see the trends happening, right? But they're just under different window dressings, you Correct. know. And it's, uh, but I, I just think it's streamlined to be much more. Well, it's definitely much more defined now. It's it's, yeah, yeah. it's got a lot more the 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 this particular technology that we're talking about for those who are listening to us right now. We're speaking about a very specific technology that that i would call a technology because it's based on the manipulation of the spirit consciousness the spirit consciousness that which is the eldest or the oldest form of your original existence um you mentioned uh a friend of yours who has you you call the uh, goddess energy at the time for yourselves to understand it easier um the spirited energy has been under, uh, one could say, a war for a very long time. I've actually done some research and I've found that um, back in the day, the Nazis used to go, when they first started their occult um, services, in order for them to go and take over a country. This was then done under not Nazism, but it was done under the philosophy called nationalist socialism. That is what they uh, use as those terms <laughs> in it. And they would mm -hmm. then go to any particular country. And I know that they had a whole list of them. Um, India was one of them. Tibet was one of them. Uh, Persia, Turkey, uh, Ireland, the United Kingdom, they would go to all these places, for example, their sacred sites, and they would go and create a, they look for the, let's say Stonehenge in the United Kingdom, and they would go there and create their rituals there, where they would then take over uh, that particular spirit of that, wow. of that sacred site. They would, they would then call it into their themselves and um, that is a type of uh, magic which uh, which was done where they used to use the golem which is a oh. clay statue that they would then call a spirit and put it into that clay statue okay then they would then in that particular way control that sacred site by then their reasoning is if i want to control that um land that lands spirit they, that lands people i would like to then control the spirit of their sacred sites so then if i have the control of the psyche of the people then i will be able to, to control that country and then they would then bring in their schools their education system and so literally slowly but surely they would then um 
set themselves up in that country at, like a parasite, the same way yeah. as you've explained how um, the alien parasite invades between the soul, the mind, and the spirit. Very, very similar in that same way. There is a, an, uh, there is a belief that's being woven so that mm. the person would believe in that. Um, yeah. Is this, this, you follow where I'm going with that? Yeah, and I think this happened to the Native Americans in yeah. you know the, the Americas. And I remember you know somebody from one of those high Illuminati bloodline families who had told me you know, just as part of the history that, you know, these high level bloodline, basically Satanists would right. go and into like certain Native American tribes and cultures mm -hmm. and try to, you know, find out like through their shamans and their medicine people or intermarry and deliberately to corrupt and hijack their systems, their, right. uh, their spirit, the land, like the spirits in the land to mm -hmm. right to control the land and the people. So if they could hijack that, and corrupt it from the original memory, okay. right? In the original, oh. whatever. Then they could take over the land and take over the people and take their power, wow. you know? And there's a whole thing about the power of the, the oh, Native yeah. Americans, supposedly that uh, like in the abduction programs, at least, you know, I'm in the United States, but we would find out like, wow, I, well, how come so many were like, you know, Celtic Native American, you know, there's always like mm. the, the Celtic Native American mix. And it could yeah. be just because there's a lot of the Celtic, native american here but it's always like uh, and then discovered that some of them who had the higher the cherokee or the higher the native yeah. american had like more astral powers and astral, right. like regular abilities that came through their bloodline right. and then they would try to you know, hijack and co-op these people and then put them in in mind well these projects that sometimes the abduction projects and but i really believe now i mean even based on some of what I kind of, in hindsight, mm. there are even certain families that I know who are involved in alien abductions and connected with military industrial complex careers. Mm. And, um, but that the, the abductions occurred by the aliens before the involvement with the military industrial complex person or entity that would try to control and co-op that bloodline person to put them in a project because they were already yeah. alien abductees who were traced through time who already had abilities exactly. so that they would trace these people and then take them and then they would be like a double abductee right so they would have maybe what was in their ancient line that they're trying to identify they, they can mm. identify them somehow like they yeah. have this whatever technologies find out okay we got to find them and then we're going to like do a love bite setup between mm. this person and that person so we can get the hybrid line and then pull them into a you know an easily entrapped spiritual oath with a military industrial complex big wig mm. with a freemason to lock those powers in so that they could take the children and then abduct the children and put them into another project like a my lab super soldier project Right. But they're already, they were already like abductees by different, whatever ETs that we're following before yeah. that involved. Yeah. You see, so there's something there. There's something there. Well, it's, it's not all black and white. No, yeah. I definitely agree with you. Um, there's also a very strong um, flair as we started off with our, with our conversation um, where we were discussing, I thought, well, I brought it up about the, we're going to, actually get to the to the to the actual explanation of how to identify what is a psyop right now and what oh. are actual disclosures and i'm bringing this up because i'm thinking it's something that we need to all um see at least and i found something very interesting from that gentleman that you spoke about mark mccann oh. where yeah. he actually spoke to um uh Rob, Rob, Robert Morningstar. Robert Morningstar, yeah. is that correct? Uh -huh. yes. Morningstar, yeah. The interview where he actually explained there are only three phases of the of the disclosure as such, which yeah. people need to be mindful of. And I'm just going to quote them quick, quick. Uh, phase one said, the first acknowledgement of the existence of these kinds of crafts, which means there has to be uh, an acceptance of that. Uh, and yeah. then in, indirectly admits to the technology that includes pr a propulsion system, blah, 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 capable of what is called mass modification technology. Okay, that's the first phase. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. the second one is the admittance 
that we have the technology, but this in turn implies very strongly that we have back engineered it from yes. the UFOs, mm. right? Yeah. How's that for admittance of guilt that crashed many decades mm. ago? Um, yeah. Then he says, I quote, I've seen evidence that we had possession or, and uh, un, an understanding of such alien technology since mid 1960s. Then phase three, which is all that he said. Phase three says third phase of UFO SSP, which is secret space program disclosure, would be uh, we did back back engineer the technology from UFO crash recoveries. Quote, and yes, there is alien life out there in the cosmos, and it has been coming to Earth for many centuries perhaps millennia, and some of it isn't friendly, end quote. So, yes. and he said straight after that, in another part, there's not <laughs> been any other disclosure aspects or things that have been made public since those three are the, f are the most important phases that um, they have to adhere to, which was set up by the actual um, NASA and all these other places, these uh, little dark governments. Yeah. And such, yeah, the military yeah. industrial complex that, that those are things that they've all put in place. That that is what they have to adhere to, as it's a three phase plan of disclosure. Yeah. Anything but I think else that, yeah, sorry. whatever he yeah. wanted to do was not probably not in agreement with what right. they wanted to do. I think he knew too much, and <clears throat> some of it seemed to be because of the people <clears throat> brought up through time to defend against these <clears throat> potential threats. Mm. and project pegasus and maybe some of these other people who have abilities now like if you track some people who were abductees and now they're like parents and grandparents and then mm. <clears throat> studying the kids and then finding out how's that working out and yeah you know, i don't know and then the, the, the portal thing was also something that um i saw in an interview with grant cameron it was a gaia mm. one so it's well known but it was just the fact that you know these craft aren't just flying around from other planets or whatever they're, they're coming through portals and it's very interdimensional and you know beings could pop in out of the portals as well so i don't know if they want to disclose that because that's a, a big part of that yeah, as well if they, I, I i actually think of and i'm speculating as well again on that part is i i do feel that what's been going on now um, look, I've seen that there's been some sightings. We've got a, a, a UFO that constantly comes at the same time of the week, goes a particular mm. flight pat pattern, and then disappears. Yeah. And it's been going on now for over a month. It's the one UFO flies up. It's not a satellite. We've checked satellite stuff. We've done all, we've done all of the testing and checking on it. Fact is, mm. I do feel that there will be obviously those who will try to reveal themselves, irrespective. Um, on the other hand, there will be the, the dark occultists or the dark magicians who will try and exploit that so that they can then uh, empower their... See, what I know, I'm interrupting myself here now, but it'll, I'll explain why, um, is there's a big issue about wanting to try and implement time in a particular way time travel it's a big deal that they've always yeah. been going on about time i mean you've mentioned it as well and they've been trying to ascertain a new a new timeline um granted we know that time does not exist we're going to move away from that particular aspect as such but for explanation purposes they are very strongly working alongside the astrological changes that have that we've been going through. So mm. their biggest motivation is to bring a particular timeline in place. Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. issue is we want to stop them from doing that. Yeah. Then you have the ETs who are coming in at a particular time. And it tells me that they are, that they have been trying to, come and reveal themselves for a very long time without having issues. And every time these malevolent guys are trying to bring in another timeline, that other old one back, the UFO issues disappear. 
it, it gets squashed. Uh -huh. it, it becomes a psyop. Do you follow where I'm going with this? That's what I've noticed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, it's quite, uh, I think that they must be very frustrated because they keep wanting to bring back a very old timeline. I think 2012 yeah. is what I felt very strongly. And then, yeah. The yeah it almost reminds me of the, you know, the Stargate SG-1 series where yes. the mold and some of the more malevolent ones would constantly try to hijack, you know, a, a world's development so that people yeah. couldn't develop and try to, and there was time travel in that show, but you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's a show, but yeah. um, you know, and it's hard to know, like some people remember these things and this kind of goes back to <clears throat> some of the symbols and ideas that came from the, that TV series that I don't think it ever hit Netflix, but it, the man in the high castle where, oh, yeah. It no, was the parallel actually. worlds and the where the Nazis took over after the war instead of like not winning the war, you know, they uh -huh. took over like the eastern half of the United States and the Japanese yeah. took over the West. And then how they figured out there was this like interdimensional portal in the Poconos Mountains in New Jersey that was like a secret Nazi uh scientific thing to yeah. basically travel between worlds but there were people who were natural travelers mm. and i always thought it was interesting that the characterization they used was that you know the ones who were natural after they traveled maybe once or twice or whatever like their memories would start coming back of their parallel selves and their parallel yeah. memories and stuff yeah. and that you know there's a whole mapping of these parallel worlds and you know maybe that is true that there's a type of parallel world thing which maybe it corresponds to like timelines where they be trying to like make a certain timeline whereas yeah. um people who are more consciously aware we we want to create like a positive timeline and how to how actually they keep trying to reset it and yeah. then trying to really right. recognize it we're doing a reset like because i noticed something like i don't know last week or the week before where mm -hmm. I mentioned on an email, like something happened, right? And and there was also a correspondent energy clearing, like mm. where I went to a, somebody to do a energy healing for my health and for my physical well-being, but right. it opened up energy in such a way that I felt like light could come in. Wow. That's naturally should be coming in all yes. the time. That was like yeah. being blocked somehow. And so when that infusion of light came in, like I had a really profound lucid dream, mm of a particular person where there was a lot of love, a, a good connection. And then in the dream, it became lucid. And then there was like a memory of a dream within a dream. Right. That's how you know. that was and then I'm like, and it was just so profound because the love was like, you know, it's eternal. Right. Mm, so mm. even though I woke up and I was like profoundly shifted in, in a state of love and forgiveness and, you know, good, good vibes. Right. Yeah, but then yeah. like I noticed two clocks that were run by batteries had like oh. suddenly like slowed down and stopped that same morning, which made me wonder, like, did something happen energetically that sometimes like when abductions would take place, for example, okay. like this would, when I interviewed people over the years, like, okay, you know, they had something happen. Oh, and then their clock stopped or their cell phone battery went dead and like, mm. or the light bulbs burned out, like several light bulbs in their house would like burn out at the same time. Mm. So, mm. you know, there was an energetic flux or something yeah. that happened or the power would go out for several hours in your neighborhood. Like when you're having one of these like abductions. So, you know, it made me wonder what was happening, but you know, my common sense did return to me. It wasn't like I was being all love and light and, and, you know, acting stupid, but I think something actually did occur in that experience where something was able to come through. And then, then you commented that, you know, th maybe this is a timeline thing where um, a new timeline, we're trying to like jump into the new timeline yeah. that we're actually creating. If we're, if we're open to the natural light that we are, right. and that could come through us, if we weren't being like, freaking hijacked and blocked all the yeah. time uh -huh. we would be going into uh, a probably a better timeline but they keep right. trying to like force us back into this like shit world um reality yeah. Yeah. that i don't know the man Something in the like castle that. one is what they keep on trying to enforce i mean they're so arrogant they yeah. call it the reset yeah. like really people resetting time that's really what klaus schwab was trying to say i suppose i just said his yeah. name anyway i'll edit it out but I'm not going even to. Even <laughs> that, um, that series, because I, I watched that series, like I binge watched it. I, I actually went yeah, through it like twice. And then 
And I was kind of looking at the characterization, you know, like the man who had all the films, who was like this wizard, you know, yeah. decode, decode all the puzzles. And, you know, he was doing great good. And then, and then the main character, the Juliana Crane, would be like almost like the goddess with the original awareness who would Notice remember the surname her other Crane. Selves. Yeah. Yeah. Crane. Crane, and and yeah, what's interesting is that the man she ended up with who was successful in their um, being able to fend off the Nazi takeover of this interdimensional portal mm. was like an Irishman. He was like the classic right. Irishman who yeah. was like a fighter, but he had this natural instinct. It was like the Celtic. Yeah. Right? Right. It's almost like these characterizations brought up kind of like these archetypal right. types of people who can be instrumental like oh this was another thing that was really fascinating and how let's say if we have parallel selves in these parallel timelines or mm -hmm. timelines or worlds that many of the people would be similar like if they were like a turncoat in one they'd be a turncoat in the other always gonna or, be a their personalities would kind of go around according to the situation but but if someone was consistently like um what juliana was accused of when she got you know basically abducted by the Nazis or whatever. They said, mm. you have an unnatural mind. Like mm. there's something about her that, you know, whatever situation she was in, it changed the tide of time where it created something new. And she was persistently always in connection with this original awareness, yes. right? She guided her in these spontaneous ways, which appeared unnatural to the normies right the mm. characters or it almost made you wonder like why some people would override the programming right mm. and it's the same kind of thing that we're i think that we're going into now where can we override the programming of, Good question. of whatever is going on so that we tap into that spontaneous natural original awareness to be a benefit towards the success of our freedom, our mm. true freedom, you know, it's just a, a thought. Food for it's thought, a good thought. Know? It's a good thought. I'd love to actually run with that thought a little. I've been thinking about that same thing now for a long, long time. Um, mm -hmm. I know from a personal experience that um, they've been trying to uh, get hold of me to try and go, go back into their programming. I'm talking about the, the, super soldier stuff and i've had video i've had interviews with people about it before and um it's quite funny when they are so adamantly trying to eventually they give up on you if you're so stubborn and so hard asked that they eventually stop trying to get to you that is when it works <laughs> then you are able to have control it's over so yourself up. again well yeah because that'll pull you up you know, they'll pull you up astrally or in, like interfere in dreams. Like I, mm, I know. talked to someone who had a thing where in the dream they were trying to get her to, um, the ability wasn't, wasn't just remote viewing the future. The ability was mm. to go somehow they were already to go into a, like a future timeline. All right. Mm. So they were able to like go to a future timeline, upload your consciousness astrally and then have your astral being use your abilities to basically go inside a person and like channel the person in the future and then find out what happened in the future through channeling the targeted person. So in that experience, it was find out what happened in the future about the earthquake that happened in Calistoga, California. And mm -hmm. you need to find out, you know, through this person yeah. who experienced it, what happened in the future that hasn't happened yet. So yeah. That's yeah. the kind of things they'll, they'll pull you up for, but then they'll yeah. do it in a dream. So a lot of these things don't have to be physical abductions anymore. It's, it's way beyond that. Yeah, yeah dream, dream jacking. I, I call it dream jacking. That's when they are essentially presenting themselves as you mentioned about your friend who noticed these particular archetypes. It's really their yeah. giveaway. If you get to learn who you are as a an organic being, uh, organic, when I say organic, I'm saying someone who is not allowing themselves to be given um, things to believe in. If you are free from belief systems as such, you should then be able to naturally be a to, to recognize these uh, archetypes that come wandering around and trying to, you know, 
collude you into a particular belief system as such. Um, I'm sure that you're dealing a lot with people with with things like that right now, given your the the your your the work that you do. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of confusion, and there's a lot of. I mean, I see people for a lot of like the narcissistic abuse, where there might be a paranormal component to their what they're experiencing that they feel is above and beyond psychology. Mm. But sometimes I think it is um, compounded. Let's say someone who's had trauma and, you know, difficult life experiences where Mm. they just didn't, they didn't get, or they didn't become aware of what they needed to. And then they just spiraled downward into a more and more heavy energy state where they started having demonic infestations. Mm. Um, in their home or in their life based on, you know, it could have been someone they had sex with or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it becomes Mm -hmm. a downward spiral relatively quickly. And so learning how to kind of untangle that so that the person can do the appropriate psychological trauma release work along with the spiritual releasement and, you know, expanding your own original awareness um, by not like opening doorways to this other stuff that they didn't even realize that mm. a lot of times they don't, they don't know. So it's, it's, it depends on what people are open to in terms of um, their ability to receive truth and process their emotions. And, and it's, it's a tough call because even when we quote embrace the shadow, mm. which is you know, we need to embrace and, and recognize like our own dark side, for example, like how we might get triggered to rage or want to, you know, judge people and go on a rant about how bad or nasty somebody is, or, you know, the darker sides of when we get triggered to negative emotions to mm. make sure that, you know, is there actually a, an entity attached mm. or is this part of a mind control program? And to, when we embrace the shadow, we don't want to over embrace the demon and then like well that's just who i am we are get lost in the shadow itself yeah yeah so being able to disengage from wait a minute that's that's really not who i am so we have to know ourselves and how we feel but also find out well what are we believing that's that's causing our own demise Mm. actually and that that's that's a tough one because you know we want we want to face reality for what it is and recognize like say predators if we're in yeah. danger, but if we kind of over, you know, focus and obsess on all the negative crap happening in the world and all the conspiracy theories, we can, we can go into a downward spiral relatively quickly. Cause it almost seems like now, yes. I don't know if it's just timeline energy thing, but it's like karma and manifestation reality is much more quick. That's so a- it, and it can go both ways. It could be like, man, you get slammed with negative shit. If like you got on this like negative spiral and then the, the karma is like instant like or the, instant. Or the yeah. ramifications. And then on the other end, it would be like when you're really open to love and forgiveness and giving and generosity and staying focused on the most high, even though your personality maybe gets triggered just to have faith that that that. I don't know. I don't like to call it source. I just like to call it the Holy spirit. Um, yeah. something that is benevolent and good to work through you in ways where you know it and you feel the flow and all of a sudden, Oh, like your prayers are answered and you're in this like positive flow of creation and reality mm. creation. Like you're jumping actually into a positive timeline mm. when you can get the feel for how does that happen and how, how we can make that happen without like ignoring our own dark side and just really working through our traumas and our issues and then being able to go over into getting on a positive growth and mm. manifestation. It's yeah. uh, it's, it's really tricky right now because I think yeah. we're being slammed with so much, you know, like one, maybe a few days during a week, it'll be like slammer energy mm-hmm. where like, everybody's having nightmares and they don't know each other. And then you find out later, like, Oh, we all had nightmares that night. Well, what's that about? Yeah. yeah. And then other days where it's like, Oh, it was just such a wonderful day. Everything flowed. And, and so it's like, we're going through these, this yeah. weather definitely. type of weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I agree with you. We've, we've got it here as well. The, you can literally see it when you're driving. Um, oh, you can see sometimes in the days, some people, everyone's erratic. Then other days they are so calm. They're going in the same, you know, 
way. They, they, they're just all okay. Then it's erratic and it's dangerous and it's accidents everywhere and it's wow. here and it's calm again. It, I, I'm finding it very fascinating because um, I, I, I remembered to, when I saw how timelines used to work that it's very similar to a rolled up paper if you call it like a like a you take a piece of paper and you roll it up yeah. and the way that you splice time in that cord or timeline is you then add other elements in the roll okay yeah. and then when you go through an event you can push down on the roll so that the two timelines touch each other or the same timeline that is filled with so many moments you, it touches and it creates a spark which yeah. then creates that particular momentum of what it is that you're looking for or going into or exploring that's how i remembered how timelines yeah. work <clears throat> excuse me and um i found out that if i have a succession of days and days on end which is literally all deja vu then i know no. there's a problem it shouldn't be deja vu every day for months and months on end um yeah. right think about it no. and not like a reset thing like a loop all the time like they keep doing that and i can see it in the news I, I i mean i can see it in mainstream i can see it in in alternative media i can see it in everything i can i know that this is a deja vu because it's all um. been done people so yeah. that's why I started thinking to myself, you know what, we need to stop this bullshit because we've been supposed, we've been meant to go into a new timeline. Let me put it this way, since 2011, actually. Oh. That's how long ago. Then systems re reset itself because they brought CERN in. Yeah, so it's been prolonged, and then in 2019, in August, we were supposed to go into the one that we were supposed to go into in 2012. I mean, 2011, excuse me. But that's mm. my observation. That yeah, you know, that whole CERN thing. thing. Mm. I've heard still, actually, it was a the Naughty Beaver YouTube channel. Okay, who, he has yeah. pretty phenomenal stuff that ties in, you know, Nostradamus with Gnostic stuff with high level channeled stuff based on certain channeled ETs right. and CERN and what people and like one of his visions, one of his visions was, I mean, I don't know if it's true, but um, because well, CERN's not just in Switzerland, apparently they have other. Oh, it's everywhere. Like, yeah. I've places. seen it. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I, I guess, I guess what he saw was like a, a biblical proportion, some, you know, the war between light and dark, right? Mm. Like when they open, let's say the portal of hell and, and friggin' Lucifer or whatever comes out, like whatever's down there mm. from the darker, lower realms. And then the light, he saw it as it manifested as three Egyptian onks, kind of like in white and gold. And mm. then that as, as the light fighting the dark in, in a way where it was just like, it could be like annihilation for the entire area. And he saw oh it gosh. as a vision and then, and then kind of, I don't know if he correlated it with a, a Nostradamus thing about Geneva, Switzerland, actually. So, and, and I think, you know, this is part of the, maybe the weird technologies that could affect time and space when these wars happen between light and dark and time and space, these weird, maybe weird phenomena are going to start happening where, who knows? I think actually, you know what? I actually feel like we've gone through that already. I think we've missed it. We've missed oh. that those um, uh, cataclysmic apocalyptic um, time ending um, because of the fact that they don't want us to, or they don't want the planet to die. They don't want to um, have everyone get annihilated all at once. Otherwise, they'll lose their, their, the power of you know, having right. to believe in a, the one thing a God wants is for people to believe in it so it can have its power, so it can exist, right? right. Um, if they wipe everyone all out, it, then where's the, you know, the, 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 the groupies? The they lost their supply, right? right? Then the rock store is <laughs> on its own, standing on its own stage, right? There's no belief yeah. in that. But on the other hand, um, I think they worked very hard to try and redirect 
us from these supposed events. So, uh, you know, we, we have to be very smart and use our critical thinking in terms of our original selves, like you brought up. And I and feel it's very important. To, uh, you know, this whole original, I think it's a process over time that really... Yeah. It takes time. It's not like a black and white thing where you do it one clearing session and you suddenly become enlightened. Right. You know, it's yeah. it's more like over time. And mm-hmm. you know, I think it's deeply rooted in psychological, like simple psychological traumas mm-hmm. and conditioned ways that we were raised, and and that really affects how we behave in relationships, and then what happens to us in these relationships that are replaying the old traumas that never really got healed and. Even when like we do our work, sometimes we still fail to see patterns that are even deeper. And mm. that uh, and it takes it takes time to really get out of what, what you said. Uh, basically, it's holding on to really fixed belief systems and narratives about mm. yourself, or about the world, or what someone else tells you. Mm. You really have to rediscover yourself and really got to look at how you're feeling. Yeah. And not not denying like yourself and your true feelings on a deep core level and really discover how you feel what you really want how you really feel you know what do you really know what do you really realize yeah as opposed to what's been told to you or what you read so that actually propelled me to I actually wrote a poem I think two weeks ago and it, it had something to do with like a one of those in the flow moments where mm thinking of something on a spiritual level that brought a lot of love and Mm. like realization of grace um, and through grace, like a deeper realizations of eternal beingness happened. Like even a glimpse of that remembrance of eternal beingness was like a a function of actually grace and faith. And then, Mm. so I wrote a whole poem about it that had to do with like honeysuckles and how um, during even like thinking of that, you know, a hawk, cries to me. And then I see the honeysuckle, like it's drawing me and then the flowers and then the, the Bach essence of the honeysuckle was actually to be in presence, to be presence. And it was like Mm. divine presence or presence to divine presence was like a, just how nature will communicate with us and reify or kind of confirm a realization Yes. So I wrote a whole poem about that, where it was like one of those in the flow moments where you're, you're open to not believing something too, too much, but allowing well, what was deeply realized, what was really realized and how do you do really feel when something higher really is able to come through? Like you have to kind of like clear enough darkness and clear enough belief systems to allow that to come through in a natural way. And so that, that's what happened for me and what propelled me to like write a poem through inspiration. And, um, and your but it's books? like, yeah, it works my on book, the same way. Yeah. Well, that happened years ago. And it's interesting because the whole love bite thing, mm. you know, what actually drew that experience into my life was really directed by a higher, a higher spiritual destiny mm. that I realized later. So there was a lot of like, negative elements to what I went through and Mm. had to realize about myself and about like the whole love by thing. But it was also a higher destiny that I realized later through time, as I released more and more of the beliefs that I thought were true Mm. and kind of like a humble release to, to God, you know, give it to God kind of thing. Um, And then, then it was revealed through an openness of release of what I thought I believed about myself and the world and someone else where it was like higher, higher wisdom can come through when we, we actually let go yeah. of our old and our old, you know, bulldoggy mm-hmm. want to be mad, want to blame, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it right. happens like mad. It really does. It's uh, yeah. but you realize only later, I think like later through time, then you see how these things play out. May I ask you your books if you could just oh uh, yeah I'll go ahead <laughs> please yeah because there's some confusion about their availability the first one the love right. bite is actually I think it's it's a classic now because it's only That's available it. in hard copy through a Libris mostly used okay. um, 
which is good. At least it's available because Amazon yeah. doesn't carry it anymore. And but mm. Amazon will carry the Kindle, and Barnes and Noble will also carry the EPUB, I think. Right. Okay. And then the second book is The Dark Side of Cupid, kind of glossy okay. there. Wow. But um, that right. one is available hard copy through Alibris also. And I don't know about the ebook because my publisher basically let it go, doesn't mm. want to do it anymore. So it's basically it's going to go out of print. Let's just put it okay. that way. So everyone, so yeah, can just uh, uh, contact you on your website to get the books. Yes. Yeah, or just go to alibris.com and see if it's available. And then sometimes I have copies, but it's better to go through them because it's, uh, you know, I don't have everything anymore because okay well i'm yeah. i'm just gonna type it alibras.com alibras yeah okay. right that's easier yeah thank you this was yeah. profound brilliant well that was yeah. yeah i mean that was a deep conversation and and it's really everything's new there's always a new oh. something to learn and realize and to kind of streamline and create new ways for healing and therapy and you know reconnecting with original awareness so that we can have our own i call it internal gps system that will yep. guide us and help us heal and get through these times because a lot of people are feeling really bummed and mm. feeling hopeless and it's all negative or, or you know we can't we can't fall into that we really have to you know have faith and have hope and really know that there is a higher way there's a higher mm -hmm. way there's a good way it maybe we don't see it but it is there you know i've um posted your information as a counselor on my website and if anybody okay. would like to contact eve lorgan please do so eve is exceptional and you will not be sorry that you've connected with eve she's a very good friend of mine Thank you, Eve, for uh, coming on board and sharing yeah. your wisdom. This was yeah, a brilliant shadow clearing all the way through. Thank you. Good. Well, thanks so much. Thank you.